This paint is a mess. Hi, I'm Ivan. I'm Nick. This is DIY Detail. This car hasn't been washed in a while. It has a, uh, an accumulation of bird droppings. Let's say a collection of them. They're different colors, different shapes, different sizes, and on just about every panel. So it's got a good accumulation of them. It's contaminated. The paint needs some help. So we'll be showing you our new all-in-one polish. Yeah, so that's why I said, is your paint a mess? If so, we're gonna show you what to do. And this all-in-one polish that you're about to see is about to be changing the game, Ivan. Right, well, not quite a game changer, but let's just say we'll modify the game. Yeah, I'm not bit. trying to overhype that part of it. But what I will say is adequately hyped is how nasty this roof is. I mean, there's a lot of clear coat failure. You guys yeah. ask us for real world dirty cars. No show car here today. Yeah, you know, the, uh, the mirror here has clear coat failure. There's clear coat failure on the roof. So no, we're not gonna address the clear coat failure. But where there is still clear coat, where it's still in good shape, we're gonna clean it, we're gonna polish it, we're gonna pr protect it at the same time. So first thing, we're gonna be foaming on a combination of all clean. So 15 to one dilution of all clean in a gallon. And then just adding a touch of incredible suds for a little more dwell time. There's bird droppings everywhere. Now what's the philosophy of putting the incredible suds in just a half an ounce into the all clean foam? Well, it gives us better foaming as you can see, but also adds a little lubrication to the mix. I'm going up and down, not left and right. How do you feel about that? As long as you're getting it on the surface, that's what matters. All right. Now we're setting up our new shop here and we don't have the pressure washer yet. So we're going old school on a lot of things. And one of them is just using a garden hose. Have we had a pressure washer here? It would have been probably a better choice, but we don't always have that luxury and you don't always have that luxury. It's laying down nice. I do kind of miss the foam cannon, Ivan, but like you said, pressure washers, foam cannons, it's an investment, right? Not everybody has them. No. And this is a big um, you know, improvement over the foam can in the sense that the all clean is really digging in and getting a deep, deep dive into this paint. If you find value in this sort of back to basic series where we're bare bones in it, not as much fancy tools, you may say this foamer is fancy, but it's a minimal investment for what it'll give you. Subscribe to the channel. We wanna give you guys videos that you love that will help you at home that's what we're all about. So comment or subscribe. Just give us a little sense that you're out there. We love to answer all your comments and help you out. Yeah, we can really see how the All Clean is attacking these bird droppings. There's a big one here and a big one there. And it's, uh, you can actually see the foam looks a little different around them, but it's actually drawing that down. And when we start rinsing, it's going to take some of that away. Absolutely. And of course the roof just plastered in bird droppings. There's no uh, protection on this paint, I doubt. I highly doubt it. Any strategy change you'd advise in terms of the rinse with a hose versus a pressure washer? No, no different strategy. It's just you're taking more water. You're using more water using a hose. The pressure washer has a big restriction in it, meaning you know a, a good quality pressure washer is two gallons per minute. This hose right now is probably putting out five gallons per minute. Ivan, I can tell you right now, the wheels are hammered. Yeah. They're gonna need some iron remover. Nick, so most of those big bird droppings are gone. Yeah, it does feel like it takes a little longer to rinse or I go a little slower with the, with the shower. It does take a little bit. Now, we're gonna refoam the wheels with the all clean. And for the rest of the body, we're gonna modify the foam rinse foam. We're gonna do a rinseless wash. Let me just get this branch out of here. There we go. The wheels themselves, we can tell immediately they need iron remover. So I'm gonna be putting the iron remover on first and come back and put the foam on there. Look at how quickly they turn purple, Ivan. Yeah, definitely. There's a bit of brake dust there. This is the real world, a real world vehicle, ready for some love. 
Probably use more iron remover on these wheels than I do on a complete car normally, yep. but they need it. Nick, I haven't seen wheels this red in a long time. Yeah, this is a vehicle that needs some love. Right, so I'm gonna be spraying on the all clean with a bit of uh, incredible suds in there while you pre-spray the whole vehicle with the rinse and wash. You could spray on all clean without foam. We could use a rinse and wash and a little spray bottle, but they have a few things that make the job easier. This is gonna be a big job. Our trusty wheel bucket. And wow, yeah, there's a lot of stuff coming off this wheel. So I'm gonna start on the tire and the wheel face, and then work my way into the wheel. Yeah, they needed a bit of work. For the contact wash, we're gonna be using DIY Detail Rinseless Wash. We have four gallons in our bucket, which means four capfuls. Go into it, and that water is no longer going to be water, it's going to be a rinseless solution. And those bird droppings just effortlessly go away. Because of the quantity of grit and dirt that we have on this, I'm going to be doing a double-sided wash, which means I start with one side of the sponge, go over the surface, then I flip my sponge and do the same area again. Doesn't take that much longer, but the reason for that is the first pass is removing the big quantity, the big stuff, and at the same time emulsifying the dirt. The next one any dirt that's on the surface, the sponge is actually absorbing into itself. And the beauty about the rinse and wash and the sponge combination is, as soon as we do that, the sponge is clean. It's a beautiful thing. We don't need to rub it up against the grit guard, none of that. And float the sponge and do the other side. And of course, we had rinse and wash on the surface already. If you're new to the channel, thank you very much for joining us. And please take the time to subscribe. And if you're new to this channel and rinse us washing, probably wondering what we're doing with this sponge. Well, this sponge does a couple things for us. It brings the dirt into the sponge, holds it till we bring it back to the bucket. And you'll notice when we put the sponge in the bucket, we let it go in and we don't use it soaking wet coming out of the bucket. Squeeze it just a little bit so it's just on the verge of dripping. And I've been accused that many people that do rinse this washing, every time they do a rinse this wash, they hear my voice in their head going, just on the verge of dripping. Let's just say I've been saying that for 20 years now. So, Why on the verge of dripping versus sopping wet? Sopping wet, you're actually taking away some of the efficiency of the sponge because you want the sponge to be able to absorb some of the dirt that's on the surface. And a sponge naturally wants to absorb. This foam is extremely absorbent. And if you're not allowing it to absorb, in other words, it's sopping wet, what's happening there is you're not getting the maximum efficiency out of your sponge. Also, you're just wasting product. If you don't know Ivan, he, uh, he prides himself on efficiency. Here's the ladder for you, sir. Okay. Bottom line is, this stuff just works, trust us. Actually, don't trust us. Go to our Facebook group, DIY Detail, on Facebook, and almost 50,000 people, most of them will tell you that the DIY rinseless is the best rinseless they've used, and rinseless washing is a legitimate thing. It's been around for over 20 years. It's not a new method, but it is a technique that you have to learn. Slightly different tools, slightly different technique, but once you understand what you're doing and why you're doing it, there's no car that's too dirty for a rinseless wash. Man, the birds sure do enjoy this bathroom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good to be cleaning up bathroom. Yeah, this uh, vehicle is definitely a community bathroom. 
or one very angry bird. Don't know what the owners of this Tucson did to the birds, but other than park in their, their bathroom, we can actually hear the contamination with the sponge on the paint. So yes, there's a bit of contamination here. I doubt this gets garaged. Oh no, it's, the only garage it's seen is when it goes into the, uh, the mechanics for service. But this couple has young children and you know, maintaining your vehicle is not always a priority. It's gonna be fun to give it back to them and let them enjoy it. Definitely. Should be big smiles on some faces. Front end's all done. Yep. Almost, yep. Yeah. I've got the back end all done. So now, we start the decontamination process. To do so, we have our perforated synthetic decontamination towel. The same iron remover that we used on the wheels, we'll use that as additional lubrication for our PSD towel. Again, if you're new to detailing, you might have heard the term claying paint. And clay bars, while popular, actually don't have clay in them. It's just a, a term that's used in the industry. Can I get a spray, sir? Thank you. And it's just, it's, it's that simple. Where you spray the iron remover is where you deposit your decontamination towel. What's cool about this diamond weave on the other side of the perforations is it stores a lot of your rinseless wash, which has lubrication in it. It's why we use it to wash in the first place. So if you accidentally press a finger down on a pressure point, it's actually gonna give you more lubrication to sort of mitigate against that. And then we fold it into force Ivan to further reduce pressure points, right? No yeah. pressure is the key with the decon towel. So industry terms for this are decontamination, decon towel, clay bar, clay towel, clay mitt, because some of them are in a mitt form. But in the end, they all do pretty much the same thing. Exactly. The advantage of the DIY detail PSD towel is the abrasive is non-existent. There's no abrasive in it. And the synthetic surface that we use is perforated for more flexibility, letting that moisture come out of there. But at the same time, it's extremely mild. So the fact that it has no abrasives means that it's a lot safer for your paint. And of course, your windows. Don't forget to decontaminate your windshield especially, but all windows. Makes them much, much easier to clean. I have some people spray the entire vehicle down with iron remover first, but that's not the way we teach it. No, and it's a very inefficient use of a product that's quite expensive actually. And quite fragrant as well. Yeah, and it's not a fragrant that, let's say everyone appreciates. Now, you heard probably in the microphone as I was going to, over the bottom of this door that it sounded rather scratchy. I'm gonna let the iron remover do its thing while I do the rest of the upper of the vehicle. Come back to that and the iron remover will have had time to work on those rust stains and those little balls of rust and iron that are there to make them a lot easier to dislodge. One thing I'm gonna do here, Ivan, uh, it's dried up a little bit on these panels. I'm gonna add more rinses wash to the paint. Yep, perfect. And it's gonna give me a little more lubrication to work with. Do you need any more over there? Yeah, the, on the back end I am. Okay. And if you have a little spot that's a little crusty, just give it a little more time, a few more passes, without necessarily doing anything else. Pressure is your enemy with this towel. The less pressure you use, the better it's gonna work for you. And like I said, I'm gonna come back to the lower part of these doors in just a few minutes. Now, I've used all four sides of my towel. I'm gonna to dunk it in some rinseless wash, swiss it back up, and we're ready to go. And of course, the iron remover contains a few surfactants in it that give it this little foaming action so you can see where you've been, but at the same time, providing more lubrication and a deeper cleaning of the paint. This paint was dull and sad looking when we started. And yes, we're gonna be polishing it, but even without the polishing step, this is gonna brighten it up. Especially on white vehicles, I don't know why I noticed it, but it, it truly brightens paint just by using the decontamination steps. Right, because you're deep cleaning the paint. 
And the better the clean, the better it's gonna look. Just letting the towel, the chemical, the agitation work for me. No pressure at all on this towel until the paint feels smooth and I no longer hear that scratching noise. Scratching noise. And how's the roof? You know, it's not bad. I think I was expecting worse based on the droppings we saw initially. Right. Now back here on this uh, little spoiler over the, the hatch, it sounds really scratchy. And the reason it does so is this is an area that has paint failure. I was wondering about that if it was repainted, but no, it's just paint failure. Right, or a clear coat failure. And that's why we're getting that scratchy sound because I'm actually on paint itself and I'm not on the clear coat. So while Nick is still using the ladder, I'm gonna come back to these lower sections here that I let the chemical do its job. So one spray on the towel, one spray down here, and off we go. And after two or three swipes, it's already clean. Dwell time is definitely your friend. Did you get the whole front bumper, Nick? Yes. Good, so we just have the roof to do. Yep. So I can start rinsing on the other side. Now the wheels, they've dried on us over this time that we've had. So I'm just gonna add a little more iron remover on here. Because A, they need it, and B, it's gonna help everything else rinse away. So I'm rinsing from one side of the vehicle to the other, and of course, from top to bottom. Now the rest of the vehicle, we're gonna be going a little more in depth with polishing and our new way of doing all in one, but for the wheels, Quick Beads is a phenomenal tool. Spray on, let it dwell a little bit, and then rinse off. Wait till that white frothiness is gone, and then watch the water beads birth themselves on your paint. When you see those beads, you know you have protected wheel faces and they'll be easier to clean next time. Definitely easier to clean. I mean, I don't wanna call this work, but it's amazing how much process went into that. We haven't even touched a polisher yet. I don't, I don't think people realize like how important the preparation stages are before you do certain things in auto detailing. Yeah, definitely. The better the prep, the better the result. And in this case, we've washed, we've decontaminated. We have nice clean paint to start with, but we have nice wet paint as well. We need to dry it. The reason I have two towels in my hands the first towel I'm gonna to use like a squeegee. We're not using a drying aid here because we're gonna be polishing. And you don't want the, uh, any ceramics or anything interfering with your polish or waxes or sealants. So in our case, we're gonna use one towel, sort of like a squeegee. And this towel is gonna to get wet. We're gonna wring it out frequently. But it's taking the majority of the water off the surface, giving our drying towel a lot less work to do. Do you want to patent a name for this, Ivan, even though I know it's existed for a while and you didn't invent it, but it, I feel like you did? No, it's uh, been around <laughs> probably as long as I have, Nick, so it's just a two towel drying. No matter how good your drying towel is, it's, it's a fun little uh, trick. Well, it preserves your drying towel, and even if you are using a drying aid, especially one that contains ceramics, what's gonna happen is you might lose hydrophobics on the, the red towel or the first towel, but your drying towel is gonna to be a lot longer lasting, a lot more hydrophilic, or it's gonna to want to absorb the water a lot better. And don't be in a rush to dry the vehicle. So go over it with the first towel, and then you can let it sit for a couple seconds. Do another panel, come back to it. At this point, you can let the air help you just a little bit. That makes sense. You're not fighting what you don't need to do the work on. It's, it's always smart to do the least amount of labor for the most amount of results. Exactly. I like to keep my drying towel folded. That gives me, again, less pressure points that I can put on the paint. You got the back door all done? Yeah. Yes, sir. In case you haven't noticed, we're in a new environment, or new to us. This is an old building in the 
the neighborhood of Omaha called Little Bohemia. This building is actually made from recycled products. So the big timbers that are above us, the big steel beams, the cement block, it was all recycled from a packing plant that was taken down in the 50s. And a lot of the buildings in Little Bohemia were made from that packing plant. And we're in the beginning stages with this building. We have contractors lined up and scheduled to do some work. We'll be doing some work as well. To make this the detailing studio we'll enjoy. But so far it's fun. And one day we will likely have trainings here. So oh, stay definitely. tuned folks. I yeah. love to teach in person, I do as well, uh, for in-person trainings, but that's probably not gonna be happening in 2024, so just stay tuned. Uh, you never know, Nick. You never know. Why am I saying never? You want a training in person here? Comment below. We listen to the people, Ivan. So we just have the roof to do? Yep. So while you do the roof, I'll get all our tools ready for the next step. Perfect. Ivan, I gave him the wink at the beginning saying we have a new all-in-one polish. Right, we have a new way of looking at all-in-one polish. And that is, we'll be using ceramic gloss on top of gold standard but in a way that's efficient and just as fast as doing a standard all-in-one, but you're getting better cut and better protection. We're wanting you to brighten up your paint, get it polished, get it protected, rinse this wash damper towel to wipe off the polish, boom, spray a ceramic gloss, almost like it's a drying aid on wet paint, Exactly. and then wipe it clean. Right, so it's not gonna take you any longer, but you're gonna get better results. Traditionally, an all-in-one polish is a jack of all trades, master of none. Meaning that it does an okay job at polishing, it does an okay job at protecting, but not great either way. Some of them are real fine on the polishing side, but do add a lot of protection, but they yeah. don't cut much. This is gonna give you the best of both worlds. Right, it's gonna give you the cut, it's gonna give you the protection, and at the same time, it's efficient, it's fun, it's simple. When we're done with a panel, we're done. And having the beauty of the system, we get to use a palm sander. You probably have one in your garage. They're super simple. Right, and the professional detailer going out there, no, 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 I've got all these fancy tools, I'm not gonna try a palm sander. Give it a try, you might be surprised just how effective, efficient, and easy to use it is. It's one-handed, so it's a lot simpler to do. And for those who have never polished before, it's a lot safer. It's a three millimeter stroke as opposed to an eight, 12, 15, 21, or 25 that you see in the rest of the industry. So very easy to do and a lot easier to maneuver as well. Now we want to always start with a clean, damp pad. We're using a pad washer. We've shown other ways of doing this, but for the sake of efficiency, this is the most efficient. One spray of the gold standard. On a moving pad. On a moving pad, that way we distribute the gold standard absolutely everywhere. You want to start with that half or this half? What's going to look better on camera, folks? That's what I want to know. Well, let's start with this half. All right, so we're going to do a 50-50 here. Yeah. No pressure on the machine. Three passes. I went up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, up, down, up, down. And exactly. look at the working time of the gold standard polish. Oh yeah, because Nick took on, let's say, a rather large section here. Normally the hood you'd break into four. You would normally do that. I was just, I was letting it ride. Yeah, exactly. The, the polish kept working, right? If you keep seeing these half circles in your polishing uh, residue, you're good. If, if you start to get these little blotchy dots with the wool pad, that's when you need to clean your pad again. So. Was it a too large section, Ivan? Yeah, on the verge of. It was on the verge of. But I think it's the smaller orbit of this that uh, the, the gold standard polish wants to, wants to kind of rock and roll for a longer time. Right. So now we've moistened the surface and picked up the polish residue with the rinse and stamp and towel. One polish. spray, maybe two since it was a larger section of ceramic gloss and dry it off there. Nick. Okay, excellent. What do you guys think it's gonna look like? Comment down below. 20% better, 30% better, 100% better. 
My goal here was to brighten up this paint. And that is a goal that's been greatly achieved. I can actually see your reflection in it now. It is so hazy and oxidized over there. Right. Uh, I, I didn't know what to expect. What can we see? Well, I can see your reflection, which is great. I can see the lights now as opposed to just a dull haze everywhere. Is it perfect? No. No, it's not perfect. No. There's still some etching into that clear coat right. from these bird droppings. And yeah. to get to that, we're probably talking wet sanding. And that's just not something I want to do on this paint. I don't know how much clear we have to work with. No. Uh, we're talking about a real world solution that isn't perfection, but is glossy and shiny from five feet away. Right. And this is paint that we know is on the verge of failing in different spots on the vehicle. So we don't want to push the limits. People might ask, is the wool pad gonna be dangerous for the clear coat? Are you shaving off clear coat with your wool pad since it's more aggressive than your yellow foam? Yes and no. With the three millimeter stroke, it's not doing much, but it is giving us a little more cut than the yellow pad. Yeah, I can't see you over there in the reflection, but I certainly can here. Oh yeah, no, there's definitely a, definitely a difference between the two. It's like I'm wearing glasses here, yeah. and over there it's like, I need to get my vision checked. Yeah. Ivan, mean, the best way I can describe this 50-50 is now that I can see it at different lights, this side is very chalky. This side is shiny. The, the oxidation, the haze here. Yeah. This actually looks like paint. Exactly. Whereas the driver's side is not looking happy right now. Nick, thank you for starting my side. Being the older person here, you know, I'll give. Ivan's faster than I am. Get out of here. No, no. But I started your side, so yeah. you know, it was a gift. Thank you very there much. You go. We'll each have a pad washer, we'll each have a polisher, and we're gonna be wiping off and applying the ceramic gloss as we go. That way, when we're done a section, we're done. We know it's done and over with, it's finished. We don't have to think about it anymore. You could go ahead and polish and then wipe off with a rinse and stamp and towel, apply panel prep with a towel, and then ceramic coat if you want. I mean, by the right. time we've done all this work, might as well, but I like the idea of adding a little ceramic gloss, making this a very doable process on yeah. a budget that anybody can do it to protect their vehicle, all this in just a few hours. And if you're doing a ceramic coating maintenance, you can actually use a red pad on this very short stroke DA, a bit of the gold standard polish, and finish off this way. It's a great way of bringing back a life to a ceramic coating that yeah, could be on the edge of not being there anymore. And you're not removing the coating by doing that? No, since the pad has so little cut and you're using a very short stroke, you're not doing a lot other than glossing the paint and removing any oxidation. Nick, both sides matching now? Yes, indeed. I started to polish and I forgot we wipe off after every panel. It, uh, it certainly makes it more satisfying, I think, because once you're done, you're done, right? Yeah, definitely. Once you're done, you're done. And you can see your results. If you need to go back over that section for one reason or another, you can. And also, it's very easy to tell where we've been. But if you were gonna apply a ceramic coating after this, you like to just polish the whole vehicle and leave the polish on there, right? What, what's, exactly. What's making this different where you want to kind of finish the section and just be done here, whereas like you'll, you'll do it differently when you coat? Because when I'm coating, I want to have the panel prep on the surface the closest I can to when I'm actually applying the coating. Really? That way dust isn't having the time to resettle on the surface. That makes sense. Ivan, it feels like the gold standard polish has kind of an infinity working time. I know it doesn't, but yeah. what, what makes a polish or a compound difficult to remove? Well, first of all, the user. Uh, and meaning you've just overworked it. You've gone over and over and you've dried out any of the polishing oils. That's one of the, the factors. Another factor is the vehicle wasn't properly decontaminated. And now you're relying on the polish and pad to do that decontamination for you. Finally, just a bad formulation. 
You might try a rinseless wash dampened towel. Yeah, that to, uh, definitely helps. Residue, because that has been a game changer for me. Right, because what it's doing, the surfactants in it are emulsifying the, uh, the polishing oils. And yes, even though our polish is water-based and there's many water-based products on the market, water-based doesn't mean that there's no oils in it. Water-based just means that there's more, more oil or more water than oil in the formulation. Ivan, far from being perfect, I would say the improvement here is pretty awesome. It's dramatic. And now it's super slick, it's clean, it's you know deep clean, because even though we did the wash and the decontamination, the iron remover and all of that, our pads are still getting black going over the vehicle because it's picking up deeper, you know, deeper embedded dirt. I would say from 10 feet away, it's like wow status. Yeah, definitely. Up close, if you're a detail to detail, you'll find a lot. But that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to empower you at home to get amazing results with just some simple steps. Exactly. And in real time, this took us less than 40 minutes to do all of this. So not the wash and the decontamination, but all the polishing and the uh, applying the ceramic gloss, less than 40 minutes. So it's not a long process. It's not something that takes long. So extrapolated over two people, it's an hour and a half. Not a bad deal. Not a bad deal for us yeah. or for the owner. Exactly. If you like this type of video, we have another one that we did in a, a short order like this. It's right up here. We timed it in real time. You want to check that out. We'll see you there.